In this Tobacco University video, we're going to cover carbon dioxide methods of delivery for cannabis production. We see a couple in this view. We'll go over some of the advantages and disadvantages of each, and there'll be more details of each of these methods here on Tobacco University. All right, let me go over some methods for carbon dioxide delivery so you can make an informed decision. So we have rain tubing. The advantages are it can allow for even distribution across the area, and it also makes for e an easy point of injection below the leaf canopy. It's basically tubing that has small little pinholes in it at equal intervals. However, the disadvantages of using this system is that the max tubing length is 100 feet, and it should be in a loop so the total area is limited, particularly for large growing operations. Uh, sh it should also have a fan to help for the distribution process because over that long area, you don't have any accumulation when you're an oscillating fan to help ensure that you're getting an even mixing of that. Despite it's being distributed pretty over a large area, uh, you want to make sure you're getting a mixing as well. Then there's also passive point injection. So the advantage is that this is the simplest setup in the sense that there's just one little uh, end of a tubing and that's where your carbon dioxide comes out. The disadvantage is it may cause high concentration pockets to develop in the grow space because you're really only having the distribution of that carbon dioxide at one central point. Then we also have injection point behind a fan. So this is like the next step above the last one. Simply put the injection point and put it right behind a fan to help, again, help that mixing process. The advantage is it's really easy to set up. Most likely you might have a fan in your growing space already. It ensures distribution throughout the grow space, so that's another advantage. However, this may have challenges in getting an even distribution in an odd-shaped room or one that's particularly long. So it might be good for a very small, potentially grow tent operation, but not necessarily for a larger growing area. And lastly, we have our heat source as a point of carbon dioxide. So the advantages of using a heat source is that if you need to heat the space anyway, why not get some added carbon dioxide to your area? However, the disadvantage is if the heater comes on only at night uh, for the addition of heat, the added carbon dioxide that it provides your plants will not really provide them any benefit. Because keep in mind, plants can only utilize carbon dioxide during the light cycle. So when the light is, uh, lights are on or the sunlight is out, that's when they can use carbon dioxide. They can't utilize it at night. So if you're using this as a heat source and it's only coming on at night when the lights are off because you have less heat in the area, not going to provide you with as much benefits as it potentially could.